Now to the first U.S. television interview with Aung San Suu Kyi. Since her release from detention last November, she has been compared to Nelson Mandela in her fight for freedom and democracy in Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. And its military regime has forced her to spend 15 of the last 22 years in detention. We should mention we conducted the interview over the telephone after I was denied a visa, though I traveled to Asia to interview her in person. But we were able to get a camera into the country, which was risky because she is still under surveillance and journalists are followed and questioned. After the euphoria upon her release, Aung San Suu Kyi, who calls Gandhi an inspiration, is refocusing her nonviolent movement for democracy. In your effort to free your people from oppression, you say you're willing to engage in a dialogue with a military regime which has been condemned for ongoing systematic violations of human rights, including rape, arbitrary decisions, disappearances, and torture. What makes you now willing to negotiate with a regime accused of such crimes? You have to talk to people if you want to bring about peaceful change. And even if you know that what they have done is very, very bad. You've indicated that you're willing to reconsider your position on international sanctions. We want to review the position of sanctions. We want to see what the political and social effects are. Are you saying international sanctions are on the table? It depends on what the outcome of the dialogue is. What has allowed you to cling to your dream for freedom and democracy for Burma for all these years? Freedom and democracy are goals which you never give up. Not even, in her case, when her husband was dying of cancer and the regime refused him a visa. He died in 1999 in London. She was also separated from her two sons. Seeing her youngest in December for the first time in 10 years. But still, she considers herself lucky. It is lovely to see my son, and I was grateful to see that he's still alive and well. And uh, there are many of my colleagues whose children are no longer alive. President Obama has called you one of his heroes. I do appreciate his words very much, but I have to say that if I were the blushing kind, I'd blush to be called a hero. It is unacceptable to steal elections, as the regime in Burma has done again, for all the world to see. What do you want from America? We want the people of America to be aware of what is going on in Burma now, just writing to their members of Congress, and then they must call for an all-inclusive political process in Burma. Have you ever doubted your course of nonviolence? No, not at all, because violent methods may bring about change quicker, but they leave such wounds. Where do you see the opportunity that allows you to believe that change will happen within your lifetime? I have seen great changes. In the first place, the people were much more open. They were much braver, shall we say. And there were many more young people among our supporters. And uh, the number of cell phones that I've seen, that's a great change. We are moving forward to a more open era, not because of any policies, but because of the IT revolution and the whole change in communications all over the globe. You are called the lady by your people. Well, I, I suppose there are worse names than the lady. I think I'd like them to see me as a worker. People take great inspiration from you. They carry your picture in taxi cabs in towns all over your country. To be at quicker, yes, very dangerous. So I wonder, how will you want the world to have remembered you when you are gone? I want them to remember me as somebody who has performed what she should have performed, who has done her duty. And I think there's nothing more satisfactory than the knowledge that you have done your duty.